Hi everyone. Just gonna get Nicole on. Hi Joe. Hi Karen. Hi hi hi. Did it, I hope it went well at the weekend, Joe. Hi, Julie. Hi, hi. Hi, darling. Hi, Nicole. Good morning. Good morning. Good so what, what, what time is it for you at the moment? 6 a.m., my dear. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're a good egg, aren't you? And you always look so glam. Put the makeup on. Oh, you're so sweet. It's just some <laughs> lipstick because I feel like I'm, uh, you know, a little need to wake up and look a little fresh. <laughs> Ah, so where are we starting today? I know we've had some questions and it always makes me laugh because you say, we've got these amazing questions, but I've removed them so that you can't see them because I actually much prefer to channel and connect and see what comes through when you read them to me. So yeah. I don't know where you want to start today. I'll, I'll hand it over to you and then we'll get cracking when you're ready. Yeah, we, we have a lot of questions. So okay. just know that if you did send a question and for some reason we didn't get to it, I promise you I save it all and we'll get to it next week, but I, I think we'll be okay. Are you doing the school run? Yeah, I'm doing the school run. Yeah, at okay. half past two. So we've got half okay. an hour. Okay, <laughs> perfect. I'll make sure to uh, get a good pace going here. Okay, fine. So um, the first question I think is really interesting because there's been a lot coming up this week about other people um, and kind of how do you not allow them to affect you? So the question, and I'm gonna start doing first names only just so that everybody's privacy can be kept, but you know your question was read if, if you sent it in. So this one is from Laura. Mm -hmm. How do you stay in your own lane when others close to you are having really difficult times? Do you know what? The first thing that comes up with that question is so often we don't think it's appropriate for us to shine, to progress, to be able to fully stand in our power when others aren't. And sometimes we find ourselves holding a part of us back or keeping ourselves small and not allowing ourselves to fully embrace all that's trying to flow through for us because we're concerned about what other people um, are going through we can have a great capacity to hold space for other people and have empathy without it becoming something that we absorb. So I think a really important thing here is to make sure that you're really boundaried in terms of where your energy is going. So to make sure that you're not, um, sometimes it can be a handy distraction for our ego to fixate on what other people are doing and use it as an opportunity for us to slow ourselves down or keep ourselves small and you've really got to watch that because actually by us raising our energetic frequency getting to a higher vibrational state i see it like osmosis people are naturally attracted to um that energy and it lifts theirs up as well so that's the first thing is just really keep yourself and check around that. The next thing is to make sure that people aren't projecting um, their views and their beliefs or their negativity onto you. So things like bubbling yourself is really useful. I always carry a bit, of, a bit of black obsidian. It's a brilliant crystal for sort of absorbing negativity. But really making sure that you're not just staying in your own lane mentally but energetically you're making sure that you protect yourself as well that is brilliant and i think one of the things that i realized from you is you don't always have to fix everything or you know sometimes there's nothing to fix and you just have to let things be and kind of see where they ride out yeah, and witness, you know, witness people with, with compassion and with love 
and with generosity, but don't make that your energetic state and your being. Like this is really, really important is that you have an ability to be compassionate and loving, but that comes from an energy of witnessing rather than energy of you absorbing the emotions of others. And that's whether you're in a coach or a service or it's your partner at home or it's a client, it's really, really important that we're not taking on that energy from others. It's really key. Um, and I feel like something else is coming through. Um, it was Laura, did you say? Yeah. Um, really watch that sometimes things that come up for other people in terms of views that they have or things that might just um, bring something up in ourselves as an opportunity for us to to say, well, is there a part of me that still holds on to that belief? Is there a part of me that ultimately believes that to be true? Is there a part of me that agrees with the sentiment they're expressing or the way that they're viewing life? And is there an opportunity for me to do some reframing of that if that is coming up? I think that's brilliant. And I think it also kind of leads into another question from Elizabeth. It's a little bit long, but I think important. She says, um, what tips do you have for the following situation? I take what feels like inspired action from soul, putting myself out there in a way that feels right. And then the outcome is not what I felt it would be or hoped for. And so I don't seem to be moving towards my big vision. On one level, I can feel that it happened that way for a reason, but on another level, the feelings of doubt about my abilities and vision and not being good enoughness creep in particularly when it happens again and again. Do you know what I think? And the reason I'm smiling is what I always find so fascinating is I just before a client call earlier, um, something from Marie Folio just landed on my inbox. I never usually click on it. And it was an interview with Morgan Harper Nichols, amazing poet that you probably heard of. Um, and I watched it. And she was talking in that about how sometimes the path that we think we're going to go on is not the path that we end on end up on and she was talking about this experience where she was a musician she was playing music and she was getting these kind of instagram followings but it wasn't really paying the bill nothing was coming of it and she was getting in this industry where she was getting interest but nothing was really happening and then one day she wrote a piece of poetry about her frustration around uncertainty you know about how you just living in this state where nothing seems certain and everything's so precarious. And from that piece of um, poetry, it ended up being viewed over a hundred thousand times on, um, I think I think she might've said it was Pinterest or it was linked somewhere. And she said, I don't know, it, wasn't, it didn't even have hashtags or anything on it, just all sort of came together. And she said, which I think is a wonderful reminder for Elizabeth, is sometimes we think we're going here and we take aligned action and the aligned action is getting us to where we're supposed to be, but it doesn't always look like the path we were going to go on. And for me in my business, in the corporate world, I have set my intention and sights on certain houses or certain ways of doing business or certain things coming in. And as it hasn't come in, it's opened the way up for something else. So this is, this is about Elizabeth really locking in the belief is like ultimately everything that's mine by divine right is coming to me. Everything that is mine by divine right is making its way for me. Everything in divine timing, everything's working out. And even if it doesn't look how I thought it would, this is an opportunity for me to fully um, embody the fact that I'm being guided to exactly where I need to go. And that's what's happening here because I feel like, I feel like she is connecting to soul, but she's very much attached to, well, it's the outcome of this. You've got to let go of all of that and say, what if I'm being led somewhere even more magical? What if this mm -hmm. is an opportunity, me, opportunity for me to have even more miraculous things come to me and really starting to embody that energy because it's, it's faith-based. You know, there's a trust and a greater divine plan that's at play. So I really would love to see her come into that energy. And I think that will be a game changer for her. For sure. And you have this saying, and I, I wrote it down and put it on my desk 
trust in the not yet seen mm -hmm. because, you know, when I was going through my situation, I said all these things. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be working these long hours. Never could I have imagined I'd be working with somebody in the UK doing all these wonderful things that meet all of my needs. I mean, even though I wake up early with you, I like my day to be done around two when my daughter's done with school. And there's never been a job like that. So trust in the not yet seen because you might be delivered exactly what you want. It just, you couldn't have imagined it. Yeah, and I think that, I love that example, and I think that's something that a lot of people could lean on, is like, but what if this works out even more magically than you ever dreamed possible? And I'd use this house as an example, like, I was really fixated on a house I wanted on a certain street in a certain area, which is where, exactly like a road away from where I used to live, and it was going to be like this, and and I was very much like, and then I'd go and see things, and it wouldn't happen, and there was a frustration, and now I'm in this house, like this couldn't be any more magical or ideal and the warps and the view and the sacredness of the land. Even the people who lived in this house before were some of the, um, the biggest entrepreneurs that we've seen in the Northwest. There was a guy who was in a famous band. It's, it's rich with interesting people and history and it's so well suited to my path. And sometimes we just have to chuck it all out there and say, well, look, there is a divine plan and it's all being released to me in divine timing. And I trust where I'm being shown and get excited when doors seem to shut and be like, there's something even better is coming in this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. I, I totally believe when things aren't happening, there's something bigger happening because it's just manifested. So trust, 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 trust. All right, we have a question from Claire. Mm -hmm. Have you reached self-actualization? And if so, when did you know? Well, self-actualization is, is an interesting concept about fully, I see it as fully attaching to your unlimited potential, like what you're here to do in your greatest capacity. For me, I actually feel like it's been more of a, a gradual unfolding. I think there's been pivotal moments that have come in where it's like, yeah, I'm here to do this work. Yes, I'm a natural healer. Or yes, I'm here to lead from the feminine. Or yes, I'm here to help people reconnect to soul from their experience. But I feel like <laughs> I'm consistently opening up to new levels of potential and unlimited possibility because we're confined by what we can see, what we believe to be possible. And the more that I play with the parameters of my energy, my beliefs of the way that I think things get to be on a, on a subconscious, on a, on a conscious and I guess a super conscious level as well, the more that I am opening up to the scale of things that are possible and available for me. So I don't see it as like a, yeah, I'm done. That's it. I've kind of locked into where I want to be and that's it. I see that as ever, ever unfolding. And I think that's a really exciting concept for all of us. The most important thing is like, are you making space to connect to that pure potentiality within you? That unlimited opportunity that ability to be connected to something so powerful and so unlimited that anything can come in for you and that's that's what i'm doing and prioritizing on a daily basis it's it's kind of changed everything for me really and it's yeah. not always easy it's not always easy you know i'm going through a process at the moment of really doing deep wound work and embodiment work and heart opening work and sound healing and really felt the call to work with sound understanding about the principles of sound and vibration as energy and frequency and um god i felt like i wrote a post on this earlier like i felt like i'd been kind of cracked open like i felt like all this old stuff was sort of coming out of me but the interesting thing is is as that old denser darker stuff starts shifting I start expanding and opening up into the next level of my potential as a human being, as an energetic being, as a spiritual being. And that's what excites me so much about doing this work. It's like, what else am I gonna uncover and open up to? And it was interesting because I was doing something the other day with sound 
and I heard the sound I heard this like frequency that was being played and spirit kind of came through and said that's like the um that's the frequency of money like that's what money sounds like it was the and I could feel like the vibration in my body sort of shifting and changing to the frequency of money in abundance so I'm really starting to play with some of these concepts around sound and what they relate to um emotionally for me and what resonates and how it changes the frequency within my body and as I do that I'm opening up again and again to the next level so I'm really excited um and slightly unnerved by that at the moment but mainly <laughs> mainly excited wow I'm like okay tell me more I've never heard about <laughs> <laughs> well I don't know I'm still playing with it at the moment so I will I will share with you as it comes through it leads perfectly into the next question. It's oh, really? amazing how the universe just kind of makes everything come together. So the next question, and I'm so sorry if I don't pronounce your name right, I would say Monia, but it's Monia maybe? I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, so one of the questions is related to something that I mentioned last week. And I'm prepared with some stuff, but I'm happy for you to answer it as well. Um, it relates to last week when I mentioned that we have different seasons to ourselves and that every week we have something. So I'll kind of introduce it, but I'll let you dive a little bit deeper. So Monia, Monia, um, I read this book, Lisa Lister's Code Red, uh, that Caroline recommended to me because I had never heard of anything like this. I loathed my period. It wasn't fun. And I didn't even know we had four seasons and we do and I'm still working on knowing them but I created this wheel for myself from uh, Lisa Lister's book so I can kind of understand and peek at it but basically um, when you are in pre ovulation that is considered spring um, it's kind of when you get stuff done um, ovulation is summer um, you really believe you can do anything. And there's a lot more to this. And I would love, Caroline, for you to chime in. And then, um, I'm sorry, did I say ovulation? Ovulation is summer. Uh, Pre-ovulation is fall. And that is kind of when you're a little bit more charming. Pre-menstruation. Pre pre-menstruation, you mean? Yeah, pre-menstruation. Yeah. Am I saying this wrong? Gosh, I must be talking funny. Um, Premenstruation is fall, and then so you're kind of charming and but but dangerous because you're you're good. And then menstruation is your winter, um, and that's when you kind of go a little bit more quiet. So feel free to talk more because I'm still learning. Yeah, so I mean, I always look at it in relation to my business. I think it's really fascinating about how each of those cycles plays out. So, for instance, after I finish my period, I am in pre-ovulation phase, and I'm full of ideas and energy and creativity, and I'm, my team are like, oh, no, here she comes. And I'm like, we should do this, we should do this, we should do this, we should do this, and let's create this and do this, and, and full of ideas and energy. When I come into ovulation phase, I tend to be at my most eloquent, my most articulate, my most sparkly, my most magnetic, my most vibrant. You'll see me on Instagram more. You'll see me on videos more. You'll see me, look, I'm in ov um, ovulation or pre, kind of in between pre-ovulation and ovulation now. So lots of hands, lots of energy, lots of this, lots of that, loads of things kind of coming up. Then I come into pre-menstruation the third week and the energy there, I tend to be very, very aware of boundaries at this point. So I tend to be very much um, uh, not taking shit, um, making sure that I am um, taking time for myself, a bit more reflective about what is and isn't working for me in my business, a bit more withdrawn, a bit more observational, a bit more quieter, a bit more blunt in the way that I deliver things. And then we've got the menstruation phase that Lisa Lister talks about, which is actually where you're very psychically connected, where I, um, this is a Lisa Lister phrase about literally bleeding on making decisions. So kind of making big decisions, I wait for my period, um, making sure that I am really tuned into what's next as I go into that next cycle of energy. So that's the way that I see the four the full stage of my business and I and I work with them so I make sure that my diary can be more full and more speaking events are planned at the first couple of weeks of my cycle and then the third week I sort of go into well let's look at boundaries and what isn't working and then the fourth one it's like well I make some big decisions and um, and that really works well for me 
That's great. I know I'm learning about it too. And I think the part that I love the most, cause I'm learning how to integrate it is, um, understanding that because I have seasons, I don't, I don't get so upset at myself anymore for feeling differently each week. Like what's wrong with me? Am I on an emotional roller coaster? It's not like that anymore. It's, it's normal and natural. So I love that part. And look, you know, we're cyclical beings and what we tend to, to, because of the way that we've been conditioned is we tend to just give credence and honor the times that we're full of, um, momentum and busyness and movement and getting things done and high energy it has just as much value to be reflective and to be and to be still and to be connected of course it does because of the ability to make decisions from a deeply grounded place so we've got to use both together the dark and the light the being and the doing we've got to use all of it you know it all works so beautifully together but we embrace all sides of us uh, you know i it has just as much beauty and magic and power when i am in a more of the darkness and working through things that are coming up for me and shifting out things that no longer serve me as well that when I'm a hive of you know creative ideas both have real value and I would encourage everybody to look at that and say well where are they thinking that one's better than the other or prioritizing one or the other or creating stories around it it's another thing do you create stories in your business in your life that when you feel full of energy and uh, optimism and you're doing that's when you get the rewards and things come in and if they then really look at that differently and say but it always gets to come in like the money or the opportunity or the clients or the business it gets to come in all the time and my job is just to go and be me and I'm consistently supported on that journey and that will really really help you have a much more um balanced relationship with it yeah for sure for sure okay so her second part to her question is about journaling um she's very reluctant to put her most intimate thoughts down on paper for fear that somebody kind of might find it and read it so it, she feels like it would be a really vulnerable action for her and so she wondered if she, if it had ever crossed your mind when you're journaling how to deal with that or if it's ever been a fear it's funny she says that i um I did occur to me the other day, you know, if somebody, somebody read, read my journal, because I left it sort of open on the table. But let me just feel into this. This feels like something a bit deeper going on for her. I do wonder whether there's a reticence for her to fully see herself for all that she is and to love all parts of herself. And I think that we know that if I was to pour out the most intimate parts of me to anybody who loved me, um, then I would still be loved unconditionally. But I do wonder if there's an energy of, of well, I love myself with conditions or accept myself with conditions. I'd really, and you know what I'm like, I always kind of take it a couple of layers deeper, but I really would like her to look at that. It's like, well, actually what do I worry about the way that people would react if they did read that and is there part of me that reacts to that part of my psyche and my being is there a part of me that is resisting looking at the darker parts of me or the more vulnerable parts of me and of course you know if it's a very real thing that's bothering you and stopping you there's other ways that you can do things you can voice note you can go out in nature and talk out loud you can talk in your head you can do it through prayer quietly or meditation but it feels to me an opportunity to explore at a deeper level whether there's a part of you that won't love all those bits of you that are um are keen to be expressed and heard that somehow they don't feel appropriate or lovable because they are yeah for sure my daughter asked me the other day if i write about her in there and i said no actually i write about how i feel about things and it's never about one particular person it's usually about connecting to the universe and stuff and I just told her I said it's my most intimate thoughts with myself and I just talked about it so I mean if she ever read it and saw something in there I would just 
you know, have a conversation. I actually hope that she does someday if I've ever passed on, because then she will remember, you know, this is what mom was thinking at that time. It's actually a beautiful memory of your whole life. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. So the next question is, you seem to have many clients who are coaches themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you feel are some of the reasons so many questions, questions, so many coaches seek you out for professional guidance? <laughs> um, I think that we're often drawn to people who inspire us to do our business or our life in a certain way and I would hope that that's something that um, I embody for a lot of coaches out there is a different way of coaching you know I got a, an amazing message from somebody on Instagram the other day who, who I hadn't um, come across before saying it was really refreshing to her to see it, a coach that was really led by soul and kind of wasn't using more of the sort of aggressive sales techniques and I think that um that's probably a reason is a lot of people are inspired by um, somebody who has gone on to help people, but uses, and this is the biggest thing I see, uses both the practical and the spiritual. I often feel like people are drawn to me because they like the balance of the two. They like the fact I'm really spiritually collected and also practical. So I think that's probably part of it. But, you know, I coach many people outside coaches as well. But I think that that's that's the thing for me is I really want to help coaches realize that there's different ways of doing business there's different ways of doing life there's different ways of growing their audience there's different ways of coaching like there's so much that you can do I often talk about this and you've experienced it is that you can coach people beyond the traditional models and you can use so many incredible techniques to get a real depth of people and I think that that's something that I really love to see in the coaches that I work with that they fully claim their way of helping healing guiding transforming people um, and we know that from the inner circle we had a lot of coaches in there and all wonderful in their own ways and all doing different things and it was so wonderful to see them really empowering themselves to do business and coaching and transformation the way that they actually want to, not the way that they're told it has to be. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but anyway, that's what came through for me. No, that's perfectly fine. We have one more coaching question and then we'll do our ending question. I know you've got to do this school run. Okay. Um, so... It seems to me that your coaching techniques are very special. How do you tune into people's energy so quickly? Oh, well, I'm running a free masterclass on this on Monday and Tuesday. So anybody who's a coach in any industry should come because I'm going to be teaching about this. But um, what often happens, I find, when people are coaching is they're while somebody's talking, they're constantly thinking of how they're going to respond. When you're working with somebody, what you want to be doing is be so absorbed in the, that person, the way the light's on their face, the way that they're moving, the way that they're speaking, the way that they're touching themselves at certain points, the way that they're using their hands, the colors they've chosen to wear, the energy they're emitting, the way that they take an intake of breath on something. I like to be so absorbed in the person who's in front of me. It's like... Um, I become them, I can feel them. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to access a part of them that I'm energetically connected to. And this is what I love. Like you'll see me, you'll see me whenever I'm working with somebody, you would have seen this. Like I'm, there's sometimes a pause when I finish because it's then I'll start processing like what's going to come through. But it's about being, when do we, are you as a coach truly in the energy of that person are you truly listening and watching and observing and allowing your body and your intuition and the messages are coming through to come through for that person or are you in your head constantly trying to preempt what you should say next or what would be smart to ask it's a completely different way of coming at coaching and this is why people often say to me my god like 
how do you know because you'll get so skilled at it that eventually you'll take on the energetic state of people and you'll be able to go to places in their past and their present and their future and sort of embody it and then you have such insight into what's coming up for them that you can do the most incredible transformation i mean i could talk about this for hours but that's it sort of in a nutshell well, we will be talking about it for hours in your math in your uh, master class on yeah. next week, right? Yeah, Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I, I'll never forget our first session. Now, mind you, Caroline didn't know anything about me and I knew nothing about her. But yet the stuff that came through her, my dad came through. It was it was crazy. <laughs> it was just amazing. Uh, so our final question, I always like to end this way because it keeps keeps us real and, and um, keeps your business real. So what has been coming up for you this week or what would you say has been a common theme in your business or personally? I'm going to go personally this week. So I feel like I'm sort of going into the depths of me over the last week, like really exploring... I guess even just on an energy frequency, it's not even like I'm consciously saying, well, I need to look at this bit. It's like, well, I sort of said to spirit, like, right, anything that's holding me back or needs to be shifted, can I want that to be moved through as I kind of embrace the next phase. And you know that I'm in the process of writing my book and all the things that want to come through. And it's like I've been drawn to all this deep kind of work around sound and movement and and shifting and wound work and it's been oh it's been a bit icky actually like really feeling like I've been a bit through the ringer feeling a bit unwell feeling a bit sick having sort of anxiety and all things sort of coming up but I really realized that that often comes up as I'm sort of making that break into into dawn like it's just the darkness is surfacing so that's what's been coming up for me I mean I had a team call earlier and it's the first thing I said to them I said I'm feeling I've been feeling a bit off color because I've really been um, allowing what needs to come through and not come through and let's try and fix you it's like well I'll come through and I'll feel it and I'll feel it and release it and that's the way it gets to be um, and it's coming through in my dreams where subconscious is, is activating and shifting things and very, very powerful. So, yeah, it's that's what I'm in at the moment. Interesting that you say in your dreams and shifting because I've been experiencing some interesting things in my dreams as well. So would love to hear more about that maybe next week because I know you need to go do the school run. We did get through all of our questions this week. So great job. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask for next time, you can either message me or Caroline through Instagram um, or Nicole at caroline-britain.com. Um, keep them coming. They've been amazing. Great so. questions. They're great questions. Thank you so much as ever. Yes. Gorgeous Love being. You. Thank you, everybody. I hope Bye. you enjoyed it. I hope you got what you needed today. All right. Lots of love. Bye, Nicole. Speak to you soon. Bye.